Hi! In today's video I'm going to show you how to restring the long tube chimes for your vintage Newtone door chime. This is a tube from a K model chime. The K model chimes were made in the 1950s and this is from a set of tubes that I acquired recently. This particular tube the hanger is missing. So you have a hole in this side and a hole in the other side but the cord that goes through the hole that the tube hangs on is gone. And lots of times when I see, get these, see these tubes or get these tubes in, I have another set at the office that I haven't brought to the shop yet. And the cord, the original cords are long gone and someone has used a piece of like raffia or something like that and sort of made some hangers out of it and it's not really right. Today I'm gonna to show you how to record the tubes and the proper way to do it. So one of the considerations on the tubes are on, on creating the cord hangers for the tubes is they have to be the right length. When the tubes hang on the chime base, when the solenoid strikers pop out, they have to strike the, ch the tube and they have to strike it in the right area. And the right area is usually the first half an inch or so at the end of the tube. If the cords are too, if the hangers are too long, it'll be too low and it'll miss it all together. And if it's too high, then it doesn't hang freely. So getting it to the right length is important. And that's a little trickier than you would think because when you put the cord through the holes and you have to tie a knot, you have to create a loop and the loop has to be the right size. And if you're doing all four of them, which sometimes is necessary, you want them all to be the same. You want them to all hang evenly so they all are struck at the same point on the tube so they all sound correct. So this is how you do it. These are the things that you're gonna need. You're gonna need some wooden dowel. This is one inch wooden dowel. And I have four pieces because if you're gonna do four tubes, you need one for each tube. You need some woven cord. And what I like to use is, this is a woven waxed cord. It is one millimeter diameter, which is the original size of the original cords. And this is, it says it's lightly waxed. And I don't know what the difference between waxed, lightly waxed, and I suppose heavily waxed is, but it's waxed cord. And this is the kind of product that you would find. It's used a lot apparently in things like people make bracelets with beads on them. It's used in wind chime to hang tubes on wind chimes. It's used to make dream catchers and all kinds of things like that. So it's a craftsy supply kind of thing. It's not terribly expensive, although this is 300 feet on a spool, so I suppose that's more than a lifetime supply of cord. And if you need some, let me know. And you need, of course, a pair of scissors to cut the cord, and you need some super glue. And let me show you how to do this. So to start with, you want to start off with about an 8 inch piece of the cord. You're not going to use all 8 inches of it, because, but because you have to knot it, I find it much easier if it's a little bit longer so you have something to actually grab onto. So let me show you how to do this because it's not actually terribly complicated. Alright, so we have the top of the tube with the holes and we have our 8 or so inches of 1 millimeter lightly waxed woven cord and you have to thread it through the tube and get it through the holes which sometimes is easy and sometimes it's not. Of course it's always really easy if you're not making a video about it then it just sort of jumps through. So there it is tube suspended on the cord and then we take one of our wooden dowels and we sit the wooden dowel on top of the tube like that like that. And the dowel is our spacer for the cord. And of course, as I've said in many videos, doing this on camera is a lot harder than just doing it because I have to try to do it so you can see it. So you tie a knot across the top of the dowel and then what I do is I spin it partially halfway once to sort of twist the knot a little bit and then you have to tie 
a second knot. And I suppose if I had made this a little longer, maybe you really want 12 inches. It would have been easier, but there you go. All right, so there's the second one. And that actually turned out much looser than I would have liked. So, not being good enough, we're gonna cut it off and do it again. So this time, we're going to make it longer because that will probably make it easier. You really want it to be very tight, tied, tied across the top of the dowel because the dowel is your spacer. It's what's going to make all of the loops more within a close degree the same length. So we'll put this, I'll tell you what, let's do it this way. Let's start the knot and hold it and put the wooden dowel and then pull it tight. Now this cord is very strong. I don't think you could pull it in your hands and actually break it. That's better. All right. So there we go. That's like that. And then tie the second knot. And you really want it to be nice and tight. Like that. That's good. So now it's really tight across the top of the dowel. So you have a double knot. It's nice and tight. See, pulling as hard as I possibly can, not going to break it. All right, so now you're not done yet. You leave the dowel in place because what I found is if you take the dowel, this is not good enough. If you take the dowel off and you flip it around, the knot's going to slowly untie itself because it's not the type of cord that the knot stays. So then what you have to do is you take your super glue and remember don't get it on your fingers because you'll glue your fingers together okay so you take the super glue and I'm using a set of magnifying visors so I can actually see the knot really up close and you look at the knot really carefully and you put a little drop of super glue on the knot and it's usually thin enough that it kind of flows and if it doesn't flow through the knot as much as you think it should, you can turn it around and sort of dab it around on it. Like that is fine. You don't need a ton, just some. The point of the super glue is it glues the knot together. Now, you need to let this set at least overnight. This is not, I don't care how fast super glue supposedly dries doesn't really say but you know you went all through all the trouble to do this you're not you shouldn't rush it just let it dry overnight or for a day the reason we have four dowels is if you're doing four tubes you need to have one dowel for each tube because you have to let it sit overnight while it dries so that's why you can do just one after the other after the other and let it sit up to show you what you end up with Here's an example of a cord I did yesterday, and I didn't put it in a tube because that was for the video. I just took it and tied it around the dowel, which now it won't be able to get back on probably. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, I tied it and I glued it, and now it's glued forever and even if I pull on it really really hard it's not going to come apart the knot is glued forever so once it's dried overnight what you need to do is take your scissors or I like my little wire cutters better and you can snip off the extra cord and you want to leave a little bit at the end of the on each side of the knot so it's got something extra there and then you take it and you turn it through the holes in the tube 
so the knot's on the inside and you don't see it. And now you're ready to hang the tube back on the hanger on the chime base. And that's how you restring the tubes of your vintage Newtone K model chime. Now, the size of the dowel that you use varies from model to model of Newtone chimes. Later chimes, the the L model long tube chimes, the ones in the 60s, they don't use a one inch dowel. I think a 5 eighths dowel is about the right size, although the next time I get one of those in, I'm gonna figure it out exactly so I'll know. The earlier chimes, the, the pre-war chimes, the ones in the 30s and early 40s, the series one and series two chimes, they have an entirely different type of hanger arrangement and they use a very, very small ho uh, loop. And I actually have some of those, so I'm gonna do a video about that also. But for today, that's how to restrain the chimes on your Newtone Vintage K-Model Chime. I hope you found this interesting and perhaps helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. If you like our channel and you learn things from it and you find it interesting, please subscribe. There'll be a little picture that shows you how to do that in the video. And that's all for today. See you on the next video.